at a Kenny and Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram under the big American flag. We've been here for 30 years and we're going to continue being here for the next 30 years to serve you with all your automotive needs. Tonight. Ah. Been the golf course cool, y'all. Today on the grilling with the guru. Yeah. We're at Oakbourne Golf and Country Club. Yeah, the Our Lady of Lords Foundation. We're doing a annual little, golf tournament. We we donate a little bit of our time and, and whatever talents we have. <laughs> we're cooking some uh, some pork chop sandwiches and oh, we're yeah. gonna be talking with some people around here. It's a Kelly Corville. Day. Yeah, Kelly yeah. Corville. There's a lot going on, y'all. There's a lot of stuff to do and a lot of stuff to see and a lot of stuff to talk about. Y'all yep. need to hang around because grilling with the guru starts. Right now. Oh. Welcome back to the show. We are out here at the beautiful Oak Barn Golf Club. Yeah. Sure. And they're going to have some golfers peeing off here in a little while. It's a little windy, y'all. That's all right, though. And it's the eclipse day. That's right. So, yeah. so if you can't see it in a little while, that's what it is. Oh, yeah. So look, look, what are we cooking? We got, listen, nothing says golf course like pork chop sandwiches. You got to love that, oh, man. Uh, nice, uh, thin cut pork chops. <laughs> With some evangelism, some salty evangelism, some, 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 some barbecue come sauce. Get out of here! Come on, you. come on! Now. What are we gonna do with that? Hey, so listen, we're gonna thank our sponsors. And of yep. course, the KD and Dodge is all is not only one of our title sponsors, but they're also a title sponsor they got, for this event. They, they got a hole in one Jeep. Bro. They're giving away a Jeep Renegade. Somebody makes a Jeep hole in one. I think I'm, I'm not even registered, but I'm a, I can only go hit a pitching iron on well, that. Well, if I make everybody look one way, I'll drive the other way. <laughs> so we'll just say I mean. So good luck to everybody. That's right. I hope somebody wins. So thank you, Katie and the Dodge, for your support in the community. Yeah. We also, look, Earl's is, is our food sponsor. You all know that. But we have to acknowledge your best specialty meats of Maurice because they donated this beautiful pork for us to cook Man, today. And I tell you what. Sammy. They, they've been doing it for years for me, helping me out because they make me look good. Yes, yeah, absolutely. They've done the LA Open for years. Uh, Sammy and his boys now are taking over. And... Uh, and they do a great job, great product. Yeah. And it, listen, you see, it tastes good. It's, it's, <laughs> half of it's cooking. You got to start with good product. That's right. And who else? We, we, Louisiana Love. Yeah, we're the greatest food makers of Louisiana Love. Yes. We got to have that. And, of course, the Gidry Companies at 204 Wilson Street. That's where it's at. 204 right. Wilson Street, powder coating, ornamental, ironwork, fabrication. We said Earl's. Don't don't be mouthing over there, Matt. Yeah, Matt no, yeah, we're gonna Earl, put you. We're gonna Earl's. put you in that headlock. We said. You know Earl. what? Just for that, Earl's again. <laughs> <laughs> Earl's some more. Earl's is Earl's the Katie place to go. Let me tell you, they got the best butchers over in the Kidiana, and they're gonna take care of. You. If you don't, see, if you see something you don't like, or you want something that you don't see, ask them. They're gonna get it for you. Let me tell you something. The booty, oh, that honey. Pure pork sausage. And the jalapeno sausage. Get out. Get off. Get out of here. Get off, man. Let's just stop. Just go over there. Girl. I just got back from San Antonio. Yeah, I, I did them deep bone chicken wings again. Killed them. Oh, dude. I stuffed Killed that them. with jalapeno sausage. Oh, have mercy. And then I stuffed another one with some boudin. Then Texans were like, <laughs> what kind of chicken is that? I said, we grow them different in Louisiana. That's all I can tell you. So, guys, uh, uh, obviously, our, our menu is limited today. It's going to be a quick show. Meat and bread. Mm -hmm. But listen, we're going to talk about some different techniques. If you're cooking for an event, how long you should hold something at what temperature, how long it's going to be good for. And, of course, you're going to spend some time talking with the organizers of this uh, event because they have a lot of good information uh, out in the community, helping every, everybody. They help it's, a lot of different people. It's a good thing to do. That's right. So, listen, let's take a little, our first little break. Yeah. Y'all go refresh your drinks. Y'all come back. And we're gonna we're not going nowhere. We're gonna talk go about nowhere. this. Go you know what the hardest part about this show is? <laughs> it's already cooked some, so the Alan Morgier is we already there. <laughs> <laughs> so if you come back and we eat, and that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. See you in a couple minutes. Y'all don't come on ahead. back, guys. Woo! Welcome back to Learn with the Guru, guys. 
<laughs> we were, we're fighting over who was supposed to bring each other in. Like it really matters. So let's talk about this right here. Okay, so why are we using pork chops? Why are we using bone in? Why are we using that thickness? Yeah, we already got asked. To Kelly's, uh, Kelly's husband was like, why y'all leave the bones in? We go tell you why. That's right. And look how thin that is, y'all. There's a reason. There is a reason for the madness. Okay, so the thickness is because it's a quick cook time and it holds better and it's it's going to be more tender product. It's easy. Remember, we're making a sandwich, so we want it easier to eat. You don't want to be pulling on this. And we don't want to cook this forever and ever and ever. They'll find unless you cook it for my wife because she like it like a hockey puck, bruh. Jen, this is not <laughs> for you, man. Nobody, this is for the people. It's literally, you throw it on, a, like right now we got about 400 degrees on the grill. You throw it on the grill over hot coals. It's like a couple of minutes on one side. You get some good sear marks. You flip it over. You sauce them or baste them. Yeah. And you cook it for another two minutes. And literally after that, it's done. Unless, you, again, you cook it for my wife, you want to leave it off another 20 minutes or something like that. You know, kind of a little dry, but that's okay. Everybody's different. But look, it even has, it, it, a pork chop has its own its own thermometer. When the blood starts running out the bone, when it turns clear or opaque. Right. Got, I mean, we you could take a loin and cut a bunch of pork steaks out of it, you yeah. know, but then it's, it's a little lean. But there's another reason for that bone. Tell him what you told. Which, well, which... I got this from Pat Ardoin, who uh, is a good friend of mine, Latreal. <laughs> then people say, hey, man, how am I supposed to eat that on a sandwich? I'm going to break my teeth. He's like, no, dude, that's the handlebar. You put that between two pieces of bread, and you grab and you smash that bread until you're on the bone, and then you eat around the bone. You never get your fingers dirty, and you throw the bone in the trash with the rest of the bread. You're done. If you've ever been to the Crowley Rice Festival, they make pork steak sandwiches exactly like the that. The same way. And that's exactly how you do it. And the other good reason why we like cooking them like that, look all the look all the inner fat. Yeah, that in inner that, in that structure right yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely. So cut. it's a moist cut. It's a moist meal. It's a moist bite. It's a moist sandwich. Let's go. Let's put it on. Let's see what it's like. Let's get it on. All right. Oh. Beautiful. Cajun grill right here, boy. Sear. Look at this. Nice little sear going on. Listen to Dude, that I'm gonna sound. use my fingers. Here's your you, I'm gonna do that. Boy, I'm help you out. I'm being pretty. You will. Uh, you just get after. It. So again, the reason that we like doing this, it's a quick cook. Because when these golfers hit the golf course, even though they feed them breakfast with the early morning uh, start, they they want them pork chop sandwiches, bro. Let me tell you well, something. They're not the only ones. Yeah. And then the other thing is too, whenever you get into your fire control. You monitor your vents. You can cook these surprisingly. You think they do cook quickly, but they also hold well. Okay. So you can cook these for a little while. You smother them down. Okay. About three, four minutes. Then we're going to turn them, baste them. Right. Another couple minutes and that's it. Yeah. They're done. Yeah. You can put barbecue sauce on it, but yeah. we, we, we started with this little thing out at La Trail and we love it. We call it a basing sauce. All right. Well, it, we use. It's basically a base of like either pig stand or, or Jack Miller's, whatever you can right. find, which a lot of people love. It's a local uh, favorite uh, for barbecuing, especially yeah. on pork chop sandwiches, but it's almost too thick. Right. Yeah. So we thin it down with some apple juice and some Sprite. I can't tell you the exact concoction because then I'd have it's to about cook. like that yeah you put about that much and you then you just about, want to thin yeah. it down so this is what it ends up looking like guys so sure. nice and thin it's a so base you have a lot of sugar in there so whenever you're going to put it on the meat and on the fire it's going to glaze that's right and as you cook it it's going to deepen in color it's going to concentrate the flavors get sweeter you're going to get some acid from the apple that cuts through the fat of the pork it just makes for a good sandwich. Well, that's why I say you put it on. You don't put the sauce on yet. When you no. flip it the first time, boom. Then you hit it with the base. Seriously. Oh, he got him. Oh, my God. You swear to the gushrooms are going to do. <laughs> yes. And then when you turn them again, you're going to hit up. You're going to hit them again, and it's time to pull them off. That's it. And you can either drop a little bit in the pan, but you won't have to. It's going to make its own its own juice. Well, we put it in a warmer box. It's almost like cheating. You know, it's like steeping in its own juices. Yeah, it, it just, just gets cool. more lovely. 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 Right. We're going to take another little break. And when we come back, we're going to tell you about whole times. We're going to tell you about different proteins. We're going to talk with Miss Kelly. Kelly Corville is going to be out here, the executive director. We're going to interview her about her. She's going to tell you about the foundation. That's right. Come back and see us in a couple of minutes. No, no, no. no.
Hey guys, welcome back to the show. We're back on the grounds of the beautiful Oak Boring Country Club. That's right. And we're grilling pork chop sandwiches for Our Lady of Our Lady Our, Lord's Foundation. Our Lady Lord's Foundation. That's right. Pork chop sandwiches. Uh, we're just kind of doing it for the cause. So we wanted to talk. Last segment we talked about Look at the that thickness. beautiful smoke just cascading over scene, the golf man. course. It is that absolutely Ender. gorgeous. Yeah. We talked about why we use a thin cut pork chop. We talked about why we did bone in. Now we're going to talk about time and temperature. Now, before you get into that, I mean, I'll be the first to say, when I go to a nice restaurant and yeah. they got a, a, a two-bone thick pork chop yeah, the, on the menu, the chop. Yep, I, I'd order that before I order filet mignon because I love a good pork chop. True. But it ain't going to cook as fast as that. Right, yeah, yeah, so, look, they, these have different flavors, you so know? So this is, this is important, guys. Don't go out and buy you a cheap meat thermometer. Get you a quick read. Oh, let me hold the right side of it. <laughs> Quick read, uh, chef grade thermometer. Yeah, that's right. Meat thermometer, because when when you want to check your meat on the grill, and I like mine like like a steak, medium rare. Sure. So I'm looking for about a 125, 127 degree internal temperature. So how do you know if it's a, a good thermometer? Price is going to be a judge, okay? It's, if it's, it's a really good it, indication. It, if it's for nine ninety nine, okay. you ain't got much right if there. If it's under fifty dollars, it's probably not a quick read. But even whenever you get into the the more modest, the higher price ones, there's a couple things you need to look for: the time it takes. So instant read. Instant read means within two seconds. That's right. Okay. Also, that er your error, your your error range, plus or minus two tenths of one degree, is considered professional. Yeah. Okay. And so when you if get you see plus you wanna... or minus a degree, right? If you want to check it when you get home, get you some ice out your refrigerator, your yep. freezer, yep. put some water in it, and check it. If it's thirty-two degrees, you got a good thermometer. Yeah, or ball it, or you can boil some water or for two twelve or That's whatever. Right. That's right. Um. So listen, you you cook your pork chops. It's great. You're gonna put them in a pan, wrap them, and put them in a, in a insulated box or an ice chest or something like that to keep them hot. How long can you keep them there? As long as you want, just don't set the temperature too high. Yes, yes, but so you're in that you're going to be in that danger range of forty to one hundred and forty degrees. Oh, you talking about before? Yeah. Yeah. So, so that is that's called the danger zone. That's when bacteria are very prolific. That's when they grow the most. Six hours is the most you have before you start running the risk of foodborne illness. I right, listen. I can. Oh, yeah, I can hear him already. Oh, Kurt, we leaving in the ice chest till the cows come home. Good, good. And when you wake up in with the, with the bubbly stomach the next day, I don't want to hear it, okay? Because that's what's going to happen. Oh, we call that the foie. The foie. When, when you, hey, oh, I got that foie. When you got to call it boss, look, I'm going to be a little late. I got to, you know. That ain't Montezuma's revenge, though. No, well, it's kind of the same thing. You just follow that up with some Mexican water, and you got your, you got your recipe there, yeah, boy. So, be, be careful. careful. Yeah, that's be right. careful. Yeah. Okay. The bad part about it is when food when foodborne illness is early, you can't really tell. It's very tough. Now we all know when food gets bad, it stinks. You know, it starts it sours. You can smell it. Mm -hmm. You can taste it. If it tastes really, really tangy, sharp, acidic, spit it out. Yeah, spit it out. There's something <laughs> wrong. But when it's early, you can't really tell. But you're going to tell later. <laughs> you're going to know for sure. Look, look. If you don't want to worry about that, just take it off the grill, eat it, go take a nap. That's all, all you got to remember. Yeah, or after about after about, after about about three or four hours, take it out and cool it off, okay? Yeah, yeah, put just it in the refrigerator. Just cool it off and you, yeah, you can always reheat right? it. So so just be careful with that, especially with something like pork. Then we also have the basin sauce on it that's sugary. I mean, this is just Speaking of that, let, let's get Matt back over here. Come Matt. Because look, we, 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 like we told y'all, we put them on. We didn't sauce them. We put them on. We let it cook for a minute or two. We flip them, depending on how hot your, temp your, the, your grill is. We flip them. So what, what's facing down right now is a basted version of that pork chop. So I want to show you what happened. Like Kurt was talking we'll earlier. Look at that. There's a lot of sugar look in that, that base and look in the meat glade, itself. Paul. So look at that. Now it's taking on the color. This is done, guys. Yeah, that's done. So we're just going to sauce this side. We're going to... Close the lid, let it go a little longer. Just a couple more minutes. A couple more minutes. Let that, let that glaze sit, and we're going to put them in the warming box along with the other ones, and they're going to get nice and happy. You know what's the best part about gr uh, grilling at these charity events? What's that? At, at, you know, especially Oak Barn, when it's raining. Yeah. We're not in the rain. That's we're not right. golfing. We're undercover. Yeah, we don't need a slicker suit. No, we good. And they're going to want to see us. Absolutely. For many reasons. Well, we're going to want to see us. <laughs> 
So we're gonna let that cook a little longer, guys. And we're gonna have Kelly uh, Corville, the executive director right. for the uh, Our Lady of Lords Foundation, coming on pretty soon. So y'all don't go nowhere. In the next segment, she'll be here. We're yep. gonna talk to her a little bit about what it is they do and their objective and why they put on this this event and other events like it. Yeah. So come back a little bit and see and come talk with her. And then it's gonna be. I'm gonna get... Oh my lord! It's, it, we're gonna have I to could, contain I, our excitement. I, I couldn't because the, the, there's no golfers on the golf. It's all I'm gonna get. <laughs> You can let you it rip. You can let it rip. No, there's nobody on the T-Box. See you in a couple minutes. Y'all be cool. Four, <laughs> two, three and a half. <laughs> Yo. Welcome back to Dealing with the Guru. Hey, guys. We have Miss... Jenny Stein, Stein. Stein. Yeah. with our Lady of Lords, our Lady of Lords Foundation. She's yeah. the executive director of the foundation, yeah. and our program just got 100% prettier. <laughs> it couldn't have got ugly. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, Ms. Jay, tell us, tell us uh, what it is you do, what's the purpose of the foundation yeah. while we're at this golf Why are we in? This is actually our 20th golf tournament. Wow. Wow. 20th in a row. Um, we even had one during COVID. Just delayed a little bit. But, um... This, this event has been one of our more significant fundraisers for our foundation. We um, provide care for those most in need through our community outreach programs. St. Bernadette Community Clinic, which is um, downtown on St. John Street, All right. takes care primarily of the street homeless, okay. and of the sheltered homeless. Okay. It's a medical clinic and it's a dental clinic. Um, we I have know where that. That's off of Jefferson yes, Street. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah, it's beautiful. Um, it's a beautiful clinic, and and the compassionate care that's given to those patients is nothing short of miraculous. Fantastic. So a lot of uh, this funding helps. Our, to... We support fully support the uh, St. Bernadette, and then we also support Northside High School has the only in school high school health clinic in the parish, and we've been there over thirty years. Wow, taking well, care of those patients and didn't the, know that that staff. Well, I went to Como. I'm a little offended, but that's okay. You, yep. you were most in need. Hey, oh, you don't you know. know. <laughs> I was most in need. They don't treat that kind of need. <laughs> yeah. hey, that, I was beyond look, need. This, yeah. I was beyond help. Let's kind of keep it on the, between the white lines. Right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> keep it. Keep it. Saying, so, okay. That's, that's interesting. Took, I never knew that. I yes, bet a lot of y'all didn't know we that. Had, um, we did we do their physicals, their athletic physicals. We, they are, they, our nurse practitioners are there all year long, so if they get Fantastic. sick. Fantastic. Um, during the summer, somebody's there to take care of them. We should also, we take care of the staff too. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful ministry that we have. That's Taking incredible. care of those most in need. So this, how many other fundraisers do y'all have in oh, the course of the year? A lot. A lot. Now, y'all always need money. The golf tournament, yes. I mean, the golf tournament is a big, is a big part of what we do. And then we have an annual event, the soiree in the fall. It's typically in October right. or November. And we'll have that this year. This is actually interesting because it's our 75th anniversary for our hospital wow. in the ministry. And um, so it's a big year for us I mean, in all ways, but certainly. Well, so if people aren't golfers and they weren't familiar with the soiree, I mean, are there ways that they can go on your oh, website absolutely. and donate Lords, di directly? LordsFoundation.com. There's a donate button. Click it and make it easy. Make it easy. We just wrapped up a, a car raffle that we had with this, our sixth year. So yes, we make it as easy as possible. Well, I'm I don't know. This is this she said this was their eighteenth annual golf tournament. Right? Twentieth. Yeah. Twentieth. Okay. So I've only been asked to come cook twice. So that means for like eighteen years, I don't I don't know who y'all had cooking. But it wasn't a, it wasn't good. It wasn't that good? Mm -hmm. Oh Lord. No. Y'all said we done set a <laughs> we, look, guys, we set the on... mouse trap. <laughs> here's a here's a direct here's a direct uh example of how uh, businesses and organizations in our community are having a direct impact on less fortunate. Absolutely. And, and really local. Everybody talks about buy local, shop local, local. We can get more local. No, we're, we're taking care of, we're taking care of our people and, and, and our those, kids. And those in most need mm -hmm. and, and you know, on, on preventive basis with the children, as far as having the in-school clinic yes. and didn't know any of this existed. Yes. And I, you know, I think that's been my mission since I started 19 years ago was to educate the community on what, what, what the needs are. Right. You know, this, this hospital was started by the Franciscan missionaries of Our Lady Sisters. Um, on they have Mary's. aged. Yeah, they've aged and, and aged out and some have passed on. And so it's really up to the lay people of our ministry to carry forth this ministry and this mission. 
within the community. And so that's sort of, that's what, that's, our, that's what our work is. Y'all doing fantastic work. Thank you so much for oh, your time you here. Well, you know, I, I said yes us. to Kelly because me and Kelly go back a long way. I said, I couldn't say no, but now, now I'm going to say yes to you. <laughs> Thank Kurt, you. we're going to make this an annual event. Oh, I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. This is Jay Stipe with <laughs> Our Lady of Lords Foundation. So whenever you say you have an opportunity to give, please do. You know and what's the website going to stay one more time? Lordsfoundation.com. You yes. know the money's going to stay local, and you know it's going to help those in most need. Because the guru said so. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Thank y'all for doing You're this. You're welcome, honey. Y'all make it fun. It is make fun. It fun. <laughs> Look, we're giving smoke signals. <laughs> oh, I'm going to smell like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs>